This is the story of the first and only reunion of the historic lineup of Genesis. Tony Banks, Phil Collins, Peter Gabriel, Steve Hackett and Mike Rutherford. A story of how it was put together in a time of dire need. Because when the going gets rough, real friends show up. Without that reunion, Peter Gabriel would have suffered greatly, both personally and professionally, due to his association with WOMAD. What happened? Did the reunion live up to the dreams of Genesis fans? Hello, Top Potters. This is Simon Mas, your friend with a master degree in music and the story of the prog reunion of the century. But first, and most importantly, what is this WOMAD? WOMAD, the World of Music and Dance Festival, born out of a simple idea, offering music and culture from all around the world to a Western audience. It all started in 1980 when Peter Gabriel had called alternative music magazine the Bristol Recorder. He wanted to organize a performance of an undisclosed African musician in the UK. Peter started discussing the matter with journalists Thomas Bruman and Bob Hooten. And that discussion grew into WOMAD. This was groundbreaking stuff. The first multi-stage festival with such a diverse array of acts, up-and-coming new wave bands, seasoned rock stars, African drummers, Irish folk heroes, Chinese dancers, avant-garde jazz heads, and much more. All along cultural workshops, pavilions, film projections, an ethnic food market. That first woman was plagued by lack of publicity, lack of suitable transportation, lack of funding and assistance by governments and embassies. The establishment simply wasn't prepared to give a hand. Unlike you, who will hopefully support my work. How? Like this video, share it with your friends, drop me a line with constructive criticism, praise, experience, or consider a small PayPal donation. Even as little as 50 cents will help. Thank you! Despite all the difficulties, on the 16th of July 1982, the festival crowd saw history in the making. Womad fused the enthusiasm of the Woodstocks and Monterey's with an ambitious view of the world to be. A world where the other was a welcome participant not a marginalized non-entity, where voices from the past and visions from the future could be heard and appreciated side by side. As it happened, I wasn't there, but all the sources I've researched for this video agree. WOMAD 1982 was incredibly successful in pretty much every aspect, except one. Financially speaking, the first WOMAD was a disaster. The organizers' inexperience and naivety played a role, but two main festival supporters didn't exactly help. Where Records' advance for the album that was to accompany WOMAD materialized only months after the festival, and the BBC pulled out at the last minute. They realized they didn't want to film the event after all. It was going to be a financial bloodbath. The organizers saw the writing on the wall and they resigned en masse days before the festival. That would surely shield them from any repercussions, right? Right? But people knew Peter Gabriel was involved. Peter Gabriel, the rock star, surely he would top up the bill. People saw me as the only fat cat worth squeezing, so I got a lot of nasty phone calls and a death threat. To his credit, Peter Gabriel set up to pay everyone out of his pockets, only to realize that his pockets weren't deep enough. Womad's debts would bankrupt him. Enter Tony Smith, manager of Genesis and former manager of Gabriel. When Smith learned of the situation, he spoke with the band. They came up with a plan. Genesis was just finishing their three-side live and core tour. They could add an extra date, have a reunion with Peter, and use the earnings from that gig 
to pay for Womad's losses. People had wanted us to do some kind of reunion and this gave us a good excuse to do it. It seemed such an easy thing to do. When Smith told Gabriel about the idea, Peter was a bit reluctant. There were no hard feelings, mind, but as he said to enemy, having tried for seven years to get away from the image of being ex-Genesis, there's obviously a certain amount of stepping back. No matter, Gabriel knew there was no other way out. He accepted Genesis' generous offer to help. The most anticipated reunion in prog rock was set to happen on the 2nd of October 1982. This was going to be epic, maybe. When Genesis and Gabriel got together to rehearse, the old magic didn't happen. They were amazed by how little they remembered of songs that they used to perform daily. But with only two rehearsals before the show, everyone did what they had to, frantically working through their parts and hoping muscle memory would return fast enough. In the meantime, lawyers advised against promoting the concert using Genesis or Peter Gabriel's name. Such is the world of corporate business. You can end up in court for advertising your performance using your name. To avoid lengthy negotiations with commercial partners, the event was given a special name, Six of the Best, a reference to the six musicians on the stage and the corporal punishment. Specifically, six hits on the buttocks dealt with a cane, a classic of British public schools. The name didn't fool anyone, though. Tens of thousands gathered at a national ball at Milton Keynes for a memorable night. Tony Banks, Phil Collins, Peter Gabriel and Mike Rutherford together again with Chester Thompson and Daryl Strummer, of course. I'll let you decide on the quality of the performance. There's a bootleg recording of the whole two-hour concert linked in the description. What I can tell you straight away is that everyone had a ball. 65,000 people sang along to the tunes that had made the story of the band. And Steve Ackett arrived straight from his South American tour for the Encore, a transcontinental flight to perform two songs and another to get back immediately after the show. Good old Steve. It didn't matter that the rain had turned the ball into a muddy mess or that the band was under rehearsed. This was a night everyone in attendance would remember to the end of their lives. And so, the reunion every Genesis fan was dying for came to pass. The people had fun down the memory lane. Peter Gabriel could fix Womad's finances without going bankrupt. The first world music festival could go on. You get this link to my Telegram channel to get a listening suggestion every week or so and a monthly recap of my activities. Everyone lived happily ever after. Thinking about it, there was somebody who was sad and upset. People in the music press who had maintained for years that there was bad blood between Gabriel, Hackett and Genesis. The same few that still tried to peddle an extra copy or two claiming Genesis had received money for their help. Gabriel was clear on the matter from day one. There was one or two suggestions saying that Genesis got some money out of this, and although they are often portrayed as very unhip, exploitative capitalist men of the rock world, it's entirely down to them now that the woman movement can move or struggle or crawl forward, and they didn't get anything out of it. 40 plus years on, thank you on my behalf. And with that, my dear Top Potters, it's time to close this video. This was Simon Mas. Keep your eyes open for more music related content. Stay cool and keep your top hat on. Bye!